перше, як я планую, це коли воно буде. Третя година. Україн. Security issue. On July 28th, the 155th day of the Ukrainian people's heroic fight against Russian invaders, they marked day of statehood coinciding with the 134th anniversary of the baptism of Kiev Rus, the medieval predecessor of Ukraine. On this occasion, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in his address to the nation that right now Ukraine is defending its statehood and that the civilized world sees and appreciates it. Для нас день державності це кожен день. Кожен день ми б'ємося, аби кожен на планеті нарешті зрозумів, ми не колонія, не анклав, не протекторат, не губернія, еялет чи коронний край, не частина чужих імперій, не землі у складі. To us every day is day of statehood. Every day we fight for everyone on this planet to realize that we are not a colony, enclave, protectorate, province, ALAT, part of a foreign empire, republic of union or autonomy. We are a free, independent, sovereign and indivisible state that has existed as such for at least 15 centuries. Since the Varangians, Kishek, Khorif and Libit founded Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, said Volodymyr Zelensky. Like almost all of the previous 154 days of Russia's war against Ukraine, July 28th began with Russian missile strikes. According to Yuri Ignat, commander of the Ukrainian Air Force, the Russians launched more than 20 missiles on the Kyiv and Chernihiv regions. Caliber cruise missiles from the Black Sea, Skander ballistic missiles from Goma Oblast, Belarus and X-22 air base missiles from Tupolev-22 bombers that took off from Russian territory. Villages and military facilities in the northern part of the Chernihiv region were also targeted by artillery rocket systems. Casualties were reported by the military and civilians. The Telegram channel Belaruski Hayon published photos of missiles launched from the Zyabrovka airfield near the Belarus-Ukraine border. Where the Russians reportedly deploy nearly a dozen S-300 and S-400 anti-aircraft complexes and several Iskander missile complexes. Also in the morning, Mykolaiv came under a massive missile strike as a result of which a school, a yacht club, an agricultural warehouse and several industrial buildings were completely destroyed. Civilian casualties were also reported. In Kharkiv city later on Thursday, Russian cluster shells hit a thermal power station and a residential block. A police officer was killed and several civilians were injured, said Sergei Bolvinov, chief of the investigation department of the National Police Kharkiv Regional Department. According to him, in the small hours, Russian surface-to-air missiles launched from an S-300 anti-aircraft complex damaged industrial facilities and a private house in the city. In the Dnipropetrovsk, at least one person was killed and two were wounded in the District, Dnipropetrovsk region by Russian missiles and artillery shells that hit a large agricultural enterprise, apartment buildings and private houses, a water pipeline and a gas pipeline. Fierce fighting continues along the front line that stretches over a thousand kilometers. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces reported Russian airstrikes on villages north of Kharkiv and attempt a real reconnaissance in the area. In the area of Izum Kharkiv region, the Russians launched an assault but failed and retreated, suffering heavy losses. On Wednesday, more than 40 enemy strikes were reported from the Donetsk region, most of them on cities and villages located north of Donetsk city. The Russians used, among others, surface-to-air missiles sent in the chemical plant in Avdiivka and the filter station near the water reservoir. As a result, tens of thousands of people were left without drinking water. In the temporarily occupied Kherson region, Ukrainian battle aircraft launched five strikes on Russian strongholds and munition depots. According to the general staff, the Ukrainian army liberated two villages in the previous two weeks and one more this week. Natalia Guminyuk, head of the South Operation Common Press Center, told Ukrainian radio that the situation on the front line was complicated but under control. The enemy forces intensified air strikes. They are come of 52 helicopters, struck the same positions, but the attackers did not succeed on the ground and had to retreat with losses. Our positions are already firmly set in and we are cleansing the area of Russian scouting and sabotage groups, said Natalia Guminyuk. Viktor Yehun, former deputy chief of the security service believes that the loss of Kherson would be very painful for the Russians because it is the only regional center they have managed to capture since invading the country on February 24th. 
Today, Mrs. Symbolic City will be claimed they are restoring something, Yegun said on the TV interview on Thursday. According to him, the Russian troops deployed on the right bank of the Dnipro River were vulnerable from the very start, and unless they capture Mykolaiv and break through to Odessa, they hardly have a chance to hold out. The Ukrainian military did exactly what was necessary to do. They took their enemy chains of logistics under fire control. Now the Russian defenses are very weak, though the military command will surely demand that they will fight to the end, said Viktor Yegun. Радіо. Суспільний мовник. Достовірна інформація. Доброї ночі всім, хто 